Okay, welcome back. This is uh, week one still, lecture two, and this is the second part of the lecture. And here what we're going to do is focus on uh, section 1.4. Okay, so in the last uh, sort of lesson, one of the things we talked about was uh, this notion of truth preservation. And one of the things we said was that uh, truth preservation. Okay, so truth preservation, the idea here is that, uh, remember we said that truth is a property of declarative sentences, and those are the kinds of sentences that we're going to be uh, studying and the relationship between them. So the idea is if one of the set, if the set of premises, right, so the set of premises here were all the sentences that are above the, uh, the line in the standard form of an argument. Uh, so if those sentences, if the premises, have the property of being true, then what's going to make an argument a good argument, uh, in, in our case, or one of the ways in which an argument is a good argument, is if the conclusion has to have the property of being true as well. And so this is what we mean by truth preservation, that the truth of the premise of uh, the truth of the premises is preserved in the conclusion. So <coughs> excuse me. So what we mean here, so arguments that um, are truth preserving are called valid deductive arguments. Deductive arguments are, are truth preserving. So let's maybe go over a quick example. Uh, suppose our premise one is uh, oh I don't know, let's use one from example from the book. So we have uh, let's say that there are two people in room 225. Uh, premise 2 is John is uh, left handed. Oh, and we should probably say who's in the room. There are two people in the room, and uh, yeah, there are two people in room 25. We'll make it John and Sally. Okay. Premise 2 is that John is left handed. Premise three, we'll say, is that Sally is left-handed. And we'll now have as our conclusion that everyone in room 225 is left-handed. Uh, oh, this is actually going to be a good example. So is this argument... Uh, a valid deductive argument. That is to say, if the premises are true, it doesn't matter whether or not they in fact are, right? We don't, we don't care whether or not these sentences are indeed true or false. What we just care about here is if they were, right? So in the case that there are two people in room 225, John and Sally, and if John is left-handed, and if Sally is left-handed, so if we take that all as given, is it then necessarily the case that everyone in room 225 is left-handed? And one of the things we, you might notice is uh, maybe there's a counterexample uh, to this argument. So this is a way of testing whether or not an argument is indeed deductively valid. And if, if there are three people in a room, you might say, well, then it's also true that there are two people. So maybe there's an, another person in the room, in room 225, Paul, uh, and Paul is right-handed, then the conclusion would no longer uh, be true. But here implicitly we're thinking that there are exactly two people in room 25, and it's only John and Sally. So to make this more uh, precise, we should say there are exactly two people in room 225, John and Sally. And so now we have a valid deductive argument. So if the premises are true, so if there are exactly two people in room 25, 
Uh, and those two people are John and Sally. And premise two says, and John is left-handed. And premise three says, Sally is left-handed. So if we have that kind of scenario, then the conclusion, the last declarative sentences, sentence, which says everyone in room 225 is left-handed, that has to be true. So this is a valid deductive argument because uh, it, it's truth-preserving, right? So that doesn't mean that the sentences are true. It just says if they are, then the conclusion has to be true as well. Okay, so that's what we mean by a valid deductive argument, right? They have to be truth-preserving. So let us say this, um, make this definition a little bit more um, precise. So we'll say an argument is, and I'll put these in caps. Whenever I have anything in capital letters, it's a, it's a concept that you should uh, make sure you're familiar with because it's the kind of thing that's going to pop up in problem sets and in quizzes. So an argument is deductively valid if and only if it is not possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. And we'll say an argument is deductively invalid if and only if it is not deductively valid. So invalidity is just the complement of validity. So if something is not deductively valid, then it is deductively invalid. So let's just finish that here. If and only if it is not deductively valid. Okay, so the argument that we presented up here is deductively valid. Why? Well, because it's not possible for these three premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. That means that in if it's at all possible to make these three premises true at the same time, that in that scenario, in the scenario in which they are true, the conclusion must be true as well. And now again, I said in the scenario where they are true, it doesn't mean that they are in fact true, right? It just means think about um, some Po some imaginary place where the three sentences for the three premises are true. In that scenario where those three premises are true, does a premise, does a conclusion have to be true as well? And if the answer is yes, then you know it is deductively valid. If the answer is no, then it's deductively invalid. And one of the things we're going to talk a little bit about in class is we're going to practice this, but we're going to give, uh, I'm going to give you a validity test. Uh, and here's a, another way of thinking about it. If, uh, pretend that the premises are true, but the conclusion is false. Do you get a contradiction? If you get a contradiction, then you know the argument has to be valid, right? So let's go back up to this example. I'm going to pretend that all the premises are true, right? Just in make belief. Pretend that they're true. And I'm going to pretend that the conclusion is false, right? So that it's not the case that everyone in room 225 is left handed. So this is my validity test. Do I run into a contradiction? And the thought is, yeah, I will. So Pretend like you have two people in room 225, it's John and Sally, and pretend that John is left-handed, and pretend that, Sal is, that Sally is left-handed. But now pretend that not everyone in room 225 is left-handed. Do you get a contradiction? Yeah, you do. So then you know that the conclusion has to be true, because if it's not, you get a contradiction. Okay, so that's our definition of deductive validity. Now there's an additional uh, property that an argument can have in addition to being deductively valid, and that is to be deductively sound. Deductively sound. So remember, when, we, when we're talking about deductive validity, 
we didn't care whether or not the premises are in fact true or not. But soundness does. So if an argument is deductively valid, right, in like in the case we have here, and it turns out that the premises are in fact true, right? So we don't have, it's not just in the case where we're pretending that they're true, but we don't have to pretend that they're true. This is a matter of fact about the way the world is. These premises are true. Then your argument is, in addition to being deductively valid, also deductively sound. So let's say that more specifically. An argument is, and we'll make this in caps, capital letters, deductively sound if and only if it is deductively valid. So notice it has to be valid first. So if an argument is invalid, it can't possibly be sound. Right? So the first thing to check whether or not an argument is deductively sound is to check to see that it's deductively valid. So an argument is deductively sound if and only it if and only if it is deductively valid and the premises are true. So as a matter of fact, the premises are true. And then we can also then give our definition of um, deductively unsound. So here we say an argument is deductively unsound if and only if it is what are you going to guess? If and only if it is not deductively sound. So in the same way as we defined deductive invalidity, we're going to define deductive unsoundness by just taking the complement of, uh, of the other property. So in this case, deductively, to be deductively unsound means that you're not deductively sound. If, uh, so an argument is deductively unsound if and only if it is not deductively sound. Okay, so that concludes the main concepts for section 1.4. Uh, again, make sure you go and over some of the examples in the, uh, in the section, in the, in the textbook, and we'll go over more examples in class. And if you have any questions, make sure to bring them up uh, in class. Thanks.